Yo. Daddy from Cincinnati is here. That's Tony right. is in the motherfucking yeah. house. Goddamn straight. Goddamn straight. It's a long ass trip. <laughs> My knees hurt like a motherfucker, but I'm here. Jesus! You have a problem? Turn off your station. Kiss my ass! I don't know! What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. It's your boy, Chris D, a.k.a. Willie Wonka, a.k.a. Dewey Man in the motherfucking house. Sitting here with some special guests all the way from motherfucking Houston, Texas. Hello, my name is Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Daniel. <laughs> that little boy, that boy Lamar in the other room. Uh, special podcast this week. We're doing an interview with these niggas. These men came out to the Dominican Republic. Uh, Lamar been here before. But uh, Daniel hasn't, so he came out here just on the fact that I was telling him that it was a decent spot he might want to check out. The man do have experience traveling. Uh, got his own business, doing his own thing all over the United States. Uh, but as far as international, man has been in Jamaica. Lamar, like I said, has also been a uh, Punta Cana. Is that right? I was born in Jamaica. So he was born in Jamaica. So you're talking to some international-ass niggas. And uh, what we're doing this week is we're going to dig into the mind of a international type of nigga, a nigga that's been all around and, and just see if it's really different is it really what motherfuckers say is it is it the same is it better is it worse is it just the whole experience so i'm gonna pass it over to dan you dan you tell me about your initial experience as far as getting off the plane and your initial thoughts about like how shit was look man getting off the plane was cool it depends on what day, time, but getting out the plane was pretty cool, man. Uh, I got out of the airport maybe in less than 30 minutes. Got my bags. The only holdup was getting the bags. Other than that, getting in and out. Duty free is right there where you collect your bags. So if you want to get some drink, cool. Other than what about, what about the duty free? Like, what's that situation like? like I'm going to tell you like this. If you're going to get a bottle, hit the duty free, man. It's cheap. I got a, a whole liter of Cavassier BSOP for 30 bucks. You can't get that in the States like that. That's going to run you at least $44. I only paid 30 for a liter. We talking about a fifth going to hit you for at least $30, $30, $35, depending on where you live. Uh, and you did anyway. duty-free here, or you did the duty-free back in the States? Duty-free here in Santo Domingo. So, all right, so Lamar, how, what time did you get in, and what was your experience like coming back into the uh, Dominican Republic? Man, I got in a little bit before Daniel, man, and when I got off the airplane, I saw nothing but beautiful, sexy, thick women, man. It's, it's crazy. The women that were at the airport taking the bags off the plane and doing all types of other shit, man, they can easily be with a ball player in the States, man. You know, Santo Domingo is a beautiful city, man. It's, it's if you like to people watch, you will see a lot of interesting people, man. The women here are so cool. Very approachable, man. I'm, I'm loving my time thus far, man. I have no complaints, bro. None whatsoever. Well, we're definitely going to get into that here in a second as far as, like, the differences in the women. But before we do that, getting out of the airport, how did y'all get from the airport to your apartment? Oh, yeah, what we did was, man, I don't know. It depends. Bad and bougie. Bad and bougie, yeah. Hey, the thing is, man, it's Daniel, man. Me and Lamar are bad and bougie, man, and I don't know if the fella's feeling bad. It depends on what kind of money you're trying to spend. Like, it is kind of bogus out here, not gonna lie, man. They did try to get us on some flugazy shit. Uh, what happened was I, uh, I, I uh, chartered an uh, a Escalade through uh, Transcore.com. Uh, we were supposed to have a Cadillac Escalade, man. They changed our vehicle three times. Uh, by the time we got out of the airport, man, they had... A, 
Yeah, we had an ML350 Mercedes Benz. But the ML350 is half the price of what we spent. The, uh, so that's what I'm saying. So basically the vehicle, the Escalade costs $100 US dollars. The Mercedes is a small compact SUV, so it only cost it like it's $50. So what happened was they tried to charge us $100 for a Mercedes. So this is the, the fuck shit though. So we had the dude take us to the bank. Uh, he tried to call his office on the slick side, man, and try to uh, charge us to go to the bank. So <laughs> of course, you know, I'm black from Houston, I'm ignorant. So the, uh, the company called me, man, on some, on some dumb shit, and it was like, hey, we gotta charge you more. I said, no, motherfucker. <laughs> you charged me for the price of an Escalade. You gave me a small ass Mercedes. So they, they cut the deal and let it go. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no BS, but basically we pulled up to our apartment, man. We got an apartment off of Airbnb. This bitch lit. Chris gonna post some pictures of the apartment, man. It's, it's lit. And I'm going to talk about when we got to the bank real quick, man. When we got to the bank, after I believe it's pronounced Scotia Bank, man. Bank. You know, the, uh, it's, it's a good bank, but they have extremely bad attitudes in there. Because, you know, I, I believe the reason they had an attitude okay. is because we as tourists are coming with, you know, just, just putting down three, four, five hundred dollars like it ain't shit. It's just play money, which it is because we're on vacation. And we're, we're, we're basically putting down months worth of salary to them. You know what I mean? And... I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think they felt some type of way about that shit, so, you know, um, yeah, man, they had a bad attitude, but the exchange rate was good, bring your passport, go to the bank, get your money, and fuck their attitudes, and, you know, just enjoy yourself, man. That's definitely a big part of it, man, like, when you're talking about when Americans go into these banks, Scotia Bank has fucking locations all over the city, but the majority of the locations are near tourist places. So you're getting a lot of these Americans that come in, the majority being white, they don't deal with a lot of African-American men. Because they don't deal with a lot of niggas, they don't know how to act with us. When white men go into these banks, they're very rude, they're very like entitled, they, they be like, like, how the fuck you don't speak English type shit? Like, like you know, like making it their fault that they can't speak their native language. But the thing is, is that you come into a different country. You have to learn their language too. The problem is, is that when we go up to the counter, we're like, hey, yeah, I want to exchange $400. We put the money down on the counter and we look at them crazy. And then they, they got to deal with that type of shit all day, every day. So it's kind of like when they get to a motherfucker that's just real and normal, they still going to treat you the same way that they would that white man. So... I mean, it's kind of like both sides of it. After you did the exchange and you got into your apartment, first of all, speak on the apartment. Right now, it's kind of fucked off. I, I, I'm seeing uh, bitch hair, nigga. <laughs> I'm talking about niggas must have been pulling, pulling hoes hair out and just wilding, nigga. I'm seeing. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> my nigga. It is like it's skeet shit like niggas. Bitches nothing all over the place, niggas probably like six bitches worth of DNA in this motherfucker like like nigga. You could make like a super Dominican bitch with just the shit that's on the ground in this motherfucker. It's probably like a crime scene in this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? But niggas been wilding out, man. So tell me about your experiences with the ladies as far as like when you first came as opposed to now. Is it better? Is it better to game online first, or is it better to come out here and then start putting your shit down? You know, for me, since I really don't speak that good Spanish, it was better for me to uh, build a relationship online first to, you know, get to know someone and, you know, set up times and dates and everything. But, man, I'm, I'm telling you, I think I find me a little semi-unicorn, man. You know, she, she, she really nice, man. I had a good time with her. We ain't posting no pictures of like the main chicks, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I post a picture, I'm gonna I'm give them the face over the bitch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that way you keep face, your, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way you keep your chicks straight, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But, but just talk about your experience, no names or nothing like that, but just your experience with some of these hoes. Man, my experience, man, it's, it's the, well, you know, the first night was a little shaky, you know what I mean? We came here, she was some, it was, it was some bullshit the first night, man. We were tired, getting off the airport, and you know, we shit wasn't set up. But since then, this is our what, like third or fourth night? Things have been progressively better, man. We learning how to maneuver. We learning, you know, 
you you learn as soon as you get here, man. You're immersed in the culture, so you if you a real motherfucker, man, you gotta learn. You gotta move like they move in order to survive. You know what I mean? So. It's, it's it's the the women here are beautiful, man. You are gonna break your fucking neck looking around in the malls, man. <laughs> Go to Agora Mall, just sit down and look around. You are gonna have a good time, man. Learn the language. Right. Don't be like me. Learn the language. You pull a lot of women that way. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it to Daniel. Yeah, man. Like it's like Mar said, man. We came here Thursday, man. It was on some real BS, man. Uh, just man, we was tired, man. Just really. We was, the thing is, man, if what I see, man, you know, a lot of the fellas posting, you know, pictures from Sosua and uh, Puerto Cana and all of that. The thing is, man, what I've gathered from Santo Domingo, it's a, it's a hunt, man. You, it, it's, the women here, you have to hunt. It, it's, a, it's a jungle, man. Like, in Sosua, it's like, man, it's sheep everywhere. It's, and that's what, that's what any fella who coming out to Santo Domingo know this. It's a jungle, man. This ain't a pasture of sheep like Sosua or something where you could just be a wolf and go, you know, the sheep don't not gonna fucking run too far. Here it's a hunt and you know we, we went to Zona Cologne, we picked up some some we picked up some 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 stragglers, man, and uh we knocked them down nonetheless, but the thing is man, these Hey man, it's it's a couple hoes out here. It's practice pussy, but a lot of these hoes you're gonna find out when you get here, man. If you slang a mean dick, they can't take no dick, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> these, these Dominican niggas ain't fucking they, shit, man. They, these hoes can't take dick. They at can't all. take dick, bro. I, I'm telling you, man. And I was, I was irritable for. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, fam. For whoever listening, man, they can't take dick. So, if you're a little dick dude, cool, bro. They gon', they gonna be good. But I'm telling you, bro. If you're slanging, you gonna be upset. So hopefully you can find, find you a nice, thick, juicy one, man. I, uh, I know a lot. I roached off Lamar. I was speaking Spanish to one of his chicks, yes, and I got her friend, yes, and her friend came through, and you know she could take dick, so I'm gonna link up with her again Monday. So, you know you gonna find some, but the, the, it's, I'm just be honest with you fellas, man. A lot of them can't take no D, man, and you know just be just just know what you're getting into when you come out here in Santo Domingo. It is a hunt, you know, and the Dominican Cupid is good, but I haven't realized my Cupid is, is ran out, fellas. So. I haven't relied on Cupid, man. I, I've been out here. I, my Spanish is okay, man. It, it ain't grand, but it's enough to get me by, man. And I've been, the only thing on Cupid, I have a couple, but I got my one main, which most fellas do. They got the one chick that's going to be your, your main that you're going to really spend most of your time with, you know. Nah, yeah, yeah, it's not elder, but elderly, but yeah, my, you know, fellas, just get you one good solid chick, you know. You know, I know my man said probably going to be listening to this, man, and you know, just know you got if you got your one solid main man, just stick to it, man, and uh, just get your practice in on these other other hoes, man, because it's it's a lot of practice out here, man. But you know, fellas, just be solid in whatever you do. See, another part of that, man, is that when you're talking about Dominican Cupid or Tagged or Badu or any of these type of sites, I'm gonna tell you, like, when you when you initially get on those sites, you're doing it because you're trying to see how many of these bitches you can actually pull. It's a trip to you. It's like a game and when you first start now because you're like, damn, these bitches ain't real. So you're looking at it like it's, not, it's a fantasy because you're not out here yet. You're just looking at all these pictures on Dominican Cupid. You're scrolling through the profiles. you practicing your Spanish using, using Google Translate, but you're not actually engaging these bitches on a day-to-day -day basis, so it's not a real thing. Now, once you get here and you see it's real, you start kicking yourself. You're like, fuck, man, if I would have, you know, if I would have, if I should have, if I could have, it's always about gaming beforehand, but you can't tell, you can't tell a person that. It's, you actually have to go through it first. That's why most niggas' first trip, my first trip wasn't all that great. If you go back to my initial podcast, I think it was uh, Up All Night, uh, 1A and 1B. I tell you, man, like, this shit, man, I was frustrated as shit, man. I, I was missing home, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was in a strange-ass place. I ain't know, man, but what happened was when I got home, I couldn't stop thinking about this motherfucker, man. It, like, it would hurt my heart, man, when I would be, like, going on Google and, like, watching. I couldn't even listen to fucking Dimbo, nigga. Like, the shit would hurt my heart thinking about these hoes dancing and shit. Like, damn, I just left that shit. Now I'm back here in the land of the fatties, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> It's hard when you make that transition back, and I think that's what makes it so addictive, is that you can go into the grocery store, dress like shit, and meet the most beautiful woman you've seen that day. That day, but every day it's another beautiful woman that you've seen, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not just talking about, oh, she cute. Like, damn, nigga, I married that bitch, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
just normal bitches in the street, my nigga. And you ain't gotta go to no club or no no bar or no no like major event to see these type of bitches. They just walking around, nigga. They just they it's like they grow them in the fucking street, nigga. They just be sprouting up out of everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Coming out the bathroom like damn. You know what I'm saying? And it's so many places where you can run to these type of chicks. If you're gonna use Dominican Cupid, if you're gonna use Badu, if you're gonna use Tag, if you're gonna use um, all of these different places, what you have to do with it is use it to understand what type of bitches like you, what type of bitches find you attractive, so that way when you get here and you start hollering at these bitches in the mall, or you go to Acropolis, or you go to Plaza Central, now you know the type that's gonna feel you, so when you step to her on some, hola, como estas, yo no habla español muy bien, pero yo quiero hablar contigo, some shit like that, she gonna laugh and you gonna get that. You know what I'm saying? That's just not on Dominican Cupid. Here's a secret, and I can get a secret now because niggas is out of here. If you only game in online, you only meet in chappies. 100% man, if you only game in online, you only meet in chappies. It's not until you get out here that you see these little opportunities of easy come up pussy. A homegirl of a bitch that your nigga fucking, like Dan you say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You at the bank and you exchanging money and the bitch in the cashier line is just cute as shit. Or the bitch behind you is cute as shit. You at the grocery store getting groceries and three bitches in line. Nigga, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And these is experiences that you can't, that you can't just get on Dominican Cupid and shit like that. So I, I definitely think social media is good, but I don't think it's the best way to really put your game down once you get out here. It's good for that practice pussy. It's good for that initial setup pussy, but as far as for long-term gaming and shit like that, trying to create a game plan for yourself, it's not worth it. So Lamar, out of all the experiences that you've had here with the women, what do you think is the number one difference between Dominican bitches and American bitches? You know what, to be honest, man, I think the uh, number one difference is the women here in the Dominican Republic, they know your worth. They value you as a man and they respect you as a man just because you are a man. You could be a, a fucked up nigga, one of the worst niggas in the world, but they still gonna value you and respect you because you are a man. And you know, I think if a lot of American women, if they did that, America would be a great place to live. You know what I mean? I probably would've never came to the DR, but you know, it is what it is. You gotta move around to get what you should be getting at home. You know, these, these women out here, they're very respectful. They're very submissive. They are pretty much what every man wants. You know what I mean? They're sexy. They go to the gym. Mm -hmm. They cook. They clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I think I just stirred some shit up, man. I'm going to pass it back to Chris. <laughs> so wait, so you man, you man girl came through and she cooked for him. But Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, tell us what happened with that. <laughs> Hey man, so hey fellas, man, uh, hey, be cautious on 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 on, on <laughs> who you let cook for you, man. Be be positive that you that you know she could cook, man. We had a chick come over here, man, and she was supposed to cook nachos, man. Shorty cooked nachos, the meat for three hours, man, like. <laughs> Three hours of cooking meat, man. I ain't never seen this shit nowhere. Like, I don't even know if she cooked it in a skillet first and then threw it in the pot. Like, like she seasoned it and, and, and boiled the shit. Like, the shit boiled for three hours, man. It boiled, it was so soupy. Like, I never seen meat, like, so thin. Like, it, it, the, the meat was so small, man. You could, if you strained it, it would go through the strainer, man. <laughs> Like it, it, it was, it was so thin, man, and it, and you know, <laughs> fellas, man, just, just watch how you, uh, you know, man, be cautious of the food, man. You never know what you' about to get into. Or that bitch spike your food or whatever, man, <laughs> and you be salty. <laughs> but what have you been eating since you've been out here? Like, man, we done, we done ate it. Uh, food that you've had. Man, we ate. Uh, I know Chris took us, uh, fellas. Chris took us. Uh, what was it? Acropolis. Mm -hmm. With, uh, the fella, hey, hey, you know, I'm a carnivore. I'm gonna tell you right now, this Daniel, man. I'm a flesh eater, man. I'm eating meat. But, you know, they ate some of the, uh, the local food, which was like some rice. I'm not, I'm not big on bread, fellas. I don't, bread is fattening with all the yeast, so I'm a, I'm a skinny nigga. Yeah. But, yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the bad part of bougie. 
<laughs> Lamar is bougie. I'm the bad part, so I ain't eating that shit. But I had uh, I had a Dominican pork chop, man, and it was pretty good. I, I smashed that shit. That's the fastest time I ate here. <laughs> no, I'm not eating slow, but <laughs> that pork chop was fire. But uh, we went to uh, we went to the casino, man. We ate there. Lamar had some uh, some Dominican type chicken, some chicken, and, chicken and uh, papas fritas, fries. And uh, and I had some uh, Dominican type seafood, like it was like a, a garlicky shrimp. Yeah, it was it was good, man. Uh, it was a little expensive, fellas. If you're going to the casino to eat, no, you, you wherever you wherever you go is high end. You're going to spend the money, man. Like, and the tip tip is included at the casino. So you know, and we also went last night to Blue Mall. Like Blue Mall is the high end. They got Louis Vuitton. You know, we drinking Hennessy and stuff. That it's expensive, fellas. So know where you stay at. If you go like Plaza Central. It's cheaper there. It, the food is cheap. You're not going to pay much. Like Zona Colonia, we ate out there. We went and ate breakfast at the restaurant out there. You know. But yeah. Yeah, the restaurant. Yeah, in the corner. So we ate there, man. We had uh, had Dominican French toast, which was good with some eggs, scrambled eggs. They don't make sunny. I want a sunny side up. They don't do sunny side. They just do the eggs two different type of ways, which is fried or scrambled. But uh, I mean, we pretty been, we haven't really ate nothing American here, man. We've been pretty much submersed in the culture, man, and we've really been digging in on it. We're just we eating the, the bad and bougie type shit, the high end Dominican food, you know. We <laughs> we ain't went to Chili's, we ain't at McDonald's. No, I'm lying. We did go to KFC last night because it was close. So we did eat KFC last night, fellas. You know, I'm not gonna lie to you and say we didn't, but we did eat KFC last night. So that's just because we was in a hurry trying to get back around and trying to move around. Yeah. And that's what's up, man. Like, the thing is, is that when you come out here, it's better to at least try to get some type of experience uh, with the local culture, with the local food, to kind of separate yourself from what you experience a lot in the States. And the thing is, is that it's more expensive to eat KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, Taco Bell here than it is in the States. Nigga, you fuck around, go to Chili's, you're going to spend $50, $60 on, on, on a fucking date, where in the States, if you're spending... Fifty, sixty dollars, nigga. That's appetizer. That's motherfucking two plates, nigga. That's drinks. You know what I'm saying? It's, so it's a lot different uh, here than it is there. It's much cheaper to take this bitch. <laughs> take this bitch a bottle per You know what I'm saying? Let her sweat. Let her sweat in the spot, nigga. Ain't no air in that motherfucking nigga. It's just fans. You know what I'm saying? But you gonna get your little burger, a little drinky drink. So Lamar, you actually went to the cafeteria, and so did your girl, the girl that you was with at the time. She also. In the cafeteria, not to her. That's everyday common shit. Yeah. That's why she flew to that shit like like flies to shit. You know what I'm saying? Like nigga, she she went right into that line. She went right through. So again, fellas, what I want you to know is, if you're looking at these two niggas' different experiences, let's say you take your bitch to Acropolis. You got three options. You take it to the movies first. Or take it to lunch first, but when you get up in the food court, you could do like what Daniel did, get you some pork chop and some fries. He paid one fifty two hundred uh, for what he had. Or you could do what Lamar did. The bitch know the cafeteria, so you can get her to help you, and basically you just point. Did you need to know a lot of Spanish when you went through the line? This nigga was just pointing. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this. You get a rice, you get beans, you get a meat. Avocado. And a salad, you know what I'm saying? And that was cheap, too. He paid like five, six hundred pesos. For, for three for three fucking motherfuckers plus drinks, you know what I'm saying? So, Lamar, talk about that a little bit as far as like uh, your experiences, what your experience been like as far as the local food. You know, man, every anytime I try to go to a new place, I try to eat the local food, man, you know, so, and luckily my stomach hasn't been on fire. I have a real delicate stomach and the food have been cooked good, man, so I haven't, no, no bubbly guts, no diarrhea, man. The, the food has been good, man. I have, have no problem with the food whatsoever, man. None whatsoever. The food is delicious here. All right, last thing we're going to touch on is probably one of the biggest things that niggas want to know about when they come in here is the Chappie situation, which is uh, where you have a lot of women that, that either uh, try to get at you through these social sites to, uh, to try to get money from you, or when you get here, uh, they've been planning it up the whole time, and then when you get it, it's when they throw it on you. Or you just walking by in your business, they see you flashy, and, and they on some come here nigga type shit. <laughs> That's a, that all, all of those types of shit has happened. I'm going to tell you a story real quick, and I'm going to pass it to Daniel. When my uncle came here, my uncle, he, he is a bougie type nigga too. This nigga want to go to the casino by himself. I told this nigga, do not leave my apartment. 
This is a nigga that like to dress. This nigga's from the 70s. This nigga Isaac Hayes, Superfly type shit, with the watch and the, the pinky ring and the chains and shit like that. This open shirt, you feel me? So this nigga left my apartment. This nigga said, <laughs> I get home from work. This nigga is sitting at the bottom of the stairs, sweating like a motherfucker with a bitch up in his lap. And I see four or five beer bottles around this nigga. This nigga looking confused. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, uncle. So, so like the bitch went off. I'm like, uncle, what the fuck happened? He's like, man, I was trying to find my way to the casino. This bitch started walking behind me. I, he asked me, did I need help? I told her no. I kept walking. This bitch kept following me. This bitch following me all the way to the casino. So I doubled back. This bitch still followed me. An hour later, she sat down by me. Next thing I know, I'm buying the bitch drinks. <laughs> <laughs> He said he just, he made, she tapped him out. He couldn't walk no more, he, so he had to bring her back to my spot. True story, a month after this nigga had went back, this bitch was still knocking on my door looking for this nigga. Real talk, man. Once they latch on and they know that you American, man, you gonna have to shake him off like on some Barry Sanders, Walter Payton type. <laughs> so Daniel, tell me about your experience, like as far as like chappies and shit. Hey, man, beware of Zona Colonial, man, hey. Bro, put it like this. I was like, <laughs> I tried to be Ricky in Boys in the Hood, man. Hey, we was watching the fight, the Floyd Mayweather McConnell McGregor fight, man. We had not, man, I promise you, man. This this going back to Thursday, man. Like, uh, Thursday, we, we had a rough ass day, man. And, and I ended up running up on a, uh, a little chappy bitch. We was getting ready to get the Uber. Man, I promise you, her friend was like a ninja, came out of the shadows. Like, like I promise you, man, she was like a ninja, man. And she was like, oh, my friend will come for your friend. So it was like, cool. But the night of the Mayweather fight, which was Saturday, man, like, it was just the three of us, man. I'm third wheeling, because I, I was already tired, man. I wasn't really trying to do too much. And we was heading out, man, and it's chappy. She locked her eyes like a sniper, man. <laughs> And she ran up on me, and I played the ignore card, man. I played the ignore card, and I already saw her two friends sitting on the beach, I mean, on the bench. So I just, I kept on smoking my hookah, man, just walking. Man, these, the thing is, fellas, know this, man. The, the chappies are like, like, fellas in the WhatsApp group, y'all think we savages, man, the WhatsApp group. But the women out here, they wolves, man. Like, she, these bitches whistling at me, like, you know, yeah, they whistling at us like, you come here, like they treating us like we Americans, like trying to holler at bitches, dog. They are wolves, man, and I kid you not, I ran from this bitch, like, I ran. Hey, hey, he's, he's dead ass serious, this nigga ran from the bitch. <laughs> I literally ran, dog, I ran it, and I ran into Ono's bar. I kid you not, I went in Ono's bar and I bought me a shot. Lamar calling my ass. I'm in, a, I'm in on those bar drinking and shit. So I come back out. Man, I'm standing next to Lamar. I kid you not. This bitch standing next to Lamar. The chappy. The chappy is standing next to. I said, man, where the fuck did she come from? <laughs> Dog, they like, it's, they like ninjas, man. You just, they come out of the shadows. And, and, and she just was not. I mean, if she was a bad bitch, I would have I gave her some play. And her friend, I, I wanted to holler at one of her friends in a bitch. But I just, because of the situation, man, it didn't really look right to me. And it's another thing, too, fellas. We was in Zona Colonial, and we, we, we left early to go sightseeing and shit. In Zona Colonial, there were some bad bitches talking about massages. I mean, bad. Yeah. Bad. But, you know, you got to watch the words they say and, and, uh, and how they move, man, because she was talking about giving uh, massages and shit, but then she was like, oh, Lamar said she was gonna give a massage back at the apartment. It sounded like she said her apartment. I don't know which one it was. So that's what I thought. It sounded like she said her apartment. And I, fellas, be cautious, man. Don't, don't just go to these chappies' houses, man, like, unless you, you done built a relationship with them. If they on the street and they say you come to, you don't wanna get robbed out here, man. And even in the, like, even if you look in the back door, like, I was looking in the building, she's like, come inside, I'll give you a massage. It looks shady in there. It looks very shady, fella. And it's a lot of dudes hanging around talking about, I got the bitches for you. I got this and this for you. Man, I'm telling you, fellas, play the ignore card when you out here in the street. It's cool if you with more than one person, man. But if you solo, man, you definitely got to be cautious. All right, man, to touch on what Daniel said, man, God gave every one of us a gift. It's called intuition, man. If, if something doesn't seem right, nine times out of ten, it's not right. Get the fuck out of there. 
you know, luckily me and Daniel are walking together, so we're less of a target. And I'm a big ass nigga, you know what I mean? So a lot of people ain't gonna fuck with us. But if you out here by yourself and some walking around tourist type shit, be cautious, man. They savage as fuck. They gonna come at you left and right. They gonna smell that American coming out your pores, man. So, you know, you you really have to be careful, man. And um, one topic that Chris didn't touch on is the transportation, man. You know, me and Daniel, we just took Uber everywhere. We didn't take no... No, no little ass cars that stuffed with 50 motherfuckers, none of the buses, none of that, man. No, they have, they have Uber moto, motos, man, the Uber motorcycles. We didn't try that shit, we just did the cars, you know what I mean? But one thing about these Uber niggas, they'll try to cut off on different street just to get a little bit more money, like an extra 50 or 60 pesos. So make sure those motherfuckers stay on the route that Uber gives them, you know what I mean? Because that's going to be the cheapest and the fastest route. But um, other than the, other than those like two incidents in Uber, like Uber been cool, man. We had a good good time in Uber, man. We got there safe, got there safe, and um, yeah, it was cool, man. Uber is really good, but beware of the chappies, man. I'm gonna pass it back to Chris. <laughs> well, the thing with the Uber is like, I, I mean, shit. Even I've been here all this time and shit. Motherfucker got me the other day and <laughs> shit. So I was coming here to kick it with these niggas. I took an Uber from my crib, usually an Uber from my crib to my job, which is further away, is 250 pesos. So when I loaded this shit up, it told me bef between 240 and 300 pesos. Alright, so when we get here, the motherfucker talking about 450 pesos, I'm like, yo. He's talking about, yeah, it's because I got lost. I'm like, yo, that's not my fault you got lost, man. But the thing is, is that if you're paying credit card, they can just swipe that. I mean, that shit is just going off top. I always pay cash, so yeah, I paid him the cash, but now I can rate that nigga bad. Now, it just depends. When a nigga got a rating of 3.5, you can't see the amount of ratings he got. You know what I'm saying? He might got 100 ratings and fucking like half of them hoes is bad and he might got his mama and his friends and his people <laughs> to rate him fives. So you just got to be careful with this Uber shit, man. Like, this is what I recommend. If you come in in the Santo Domingo, use that nigga Allen. You know what I'm saying? That nigga, he's going to pick you up from the airport. He's going to bring you to where you got to be. If you don't have internet and you don't have service, then you're in a bad situation. I got a partner who came in two nights ago. This nigga flew into Santo Domingo, did not have a fucking way to get to his hotel. He thought wrong <laughs> that there were shuttles that go from the airport to Santo Domingo. Nigga, this is not the States, man. It does not work like that, man. When you get out of the airport, you are on your own. If your hotel did not tell you specifically that they sent in a driver for you, then you got to find your own way into the city. And it's not close. You cannot walk, nigga. It is like 30, 45 minutes, and it's on a freeway. You know what I'm saying? So you cannot take no chances with that shit. The other thing is, is that if you do like one of these chauffeur services or something like that, you can run into the same situation like with Daniel where what recourse do you have to get your money back as far as a refund if you feel like they wronged you? Or if the nigga show up, you supposed to be getting a fucking, like he said, a motherfucking, um, an Escalade, and the nigga show up in the hoopty, like, <laughs> they charge you for the Escalade. Like, who, how can you get your money back? Chances are you used your card to set the shit up. You see what I'm saying? So now your card out there, this, this company, you don't even know if, whether or not they shady or, or, or righteous or what. It's just better, in my opinion, to use a nigga that's going to take care of you. My nigga... Nigga, I was at the grocery store. This nigga he sent me a message on WhatsApp talking about, say, man, I need, a, I need help. I'm at the airport. <laughs> nigga say, man, my plane is finna land. I ain't got no ride. I hit that nigga Allen up. I told that nigga the situation. Hey, man, I got a partner at the airport. Just got in from the States. This is where his hotel is. Can you help him out? And he say, I bet I'm on my way, Chris, because I trust you. That nigga trust me. That nigga did not speak no Spanish. He didn't speak no Spanish. You know what I'm saying? And my nigga did not speak no English. But what I did was I coordinated that shit for him, told him where his hotel was. This nigga got to the hotel and paid him an extra tip. You know what I'm saying? This nigga ain't try, try to charge him fucked up or nothing like that. It was just straight 50, you know what I'm saying? It, and it was only 50 because of the time. You feel me? So if you got niggas, if you're going to Punta Cana, Sasua, Punta Plata, Santo Domingo, the number one thing that I recommend is having somebody that's going to help you out when you get here, whether it's in the form of an elder like like what I did, what's a, it's in the form of a nigga like me, like Daniel and Lamar did. But now they next trip, they done already made connections and contacts, so then that way their situation is going to be much easier 
if they decide to come back. That's what you do is you build on each trip. You know what I'm saying? First trip is this. Next trip is like, oh shit, I know where I can get my spot at. I know where I can get my food at. Then it's not like the Thursday night when y'all got here because now it's on and popping as soon as you touch down. So lasting thoughts. What is one thing that you would recommend or one piece of advice that you would give a nigga coming here for the first time? Well, a two piece. <clears throat> Exchange your money at the bank. And secondly, if you're going to buy food or anything, go to a store where the prices are labeled. If not, they're going to try to hit you over the head for that shit. Daniel. Yeah, man. Normally, if you got to, I'm going to tell you, fellas, man. This is my experience, man. I know a lot of fellas, Marcus, and a lot of the other guys can touch on it, man. Airbnb is solid, man. Get you an apartment, man. With this spot we got, we only pay $55 a night, man. It's, this bitch is built like a hotel, man. And we'll take some pictures, man, and, and post it on for y'all to see. I know Marcus is in a, uh, in a group, and he posted a video of his uh, Airbnb spot. He only paid $25 for it for a one-bedroom, fellas. I'm like, man, dude, like, and get you some groceries, man. And uh, we went to Super Mercado. We spent maybe $130, man. We bought pizzas, chicken, everything, beer. Just, we, we loaded up, man. I mean, and try to save your money if you want to, man, to play later, man. We still ate out. Don't get it wrong, fellas. But hit the Super Mercado, man, and buy you some groceries. All righty, good advice. All right, so we're going to end the show there for this week, man. I want to say appreciate to my boys Daniel and Lamar for coming out, hanging out, man. It's been a, a lovely trip. They still got some uh, a whole lot of other shit going on, so definitely represent yourself in the comments uh, after this is said and done. Uh, if you have any additional information that you would like to pass on uh, to all these boys out here still on the fence who, who, for whatever reason, still like living in Trump's America, man, still like looking at them ugly-ass bitches when you go to Walmart every day and shit. Hey, man, if that's what you want for your life, I am not hating on you. But I'm just showing and I'm telling you that it's a different way, man. And when you come out here and when you see this shit and when you actually live it and you're a part of it, you, you kind of get a good feeling for it. All right, my niggas, until next week, man, y'all stay, stay up, man. Keep your head down. Don't get shot. Be good to one another. Peace. All right, man.